The National Soccer Coaches Association of America is proud to be the world's largest soccer coaches organization and the NSCAA is proud to bring you the November 19, 2013 edition of the weekly college highlights and ranking show. It's tournament time and we bring you the results from the first round of women division one and the men's division one field of 48 next right here on NSCAA TV. And Neil McGuire's California Golden Bears rolled into Santa Clara in the first round with 11-4-5 record against Jerry Smith's Broncos and Santa Clara on a goal from Allie Burgill, assist by Julie Johnson, got things started in just the 22nd minute and the Broncos took a 1-0 lead. But the Golden Bears would fight back. How about that goal right there from Emmy Lawson? A beautiful header, the assist to Rachel Mercik and the game was tied at one in Santa Clara. But the Broncos would not be denied in the 70th minute. A great pass from Brittany Ambrose, the steal, and then Sofia Huerta scores in the 70th minute, and the Broncos would improve to an impressive 15-4-1. I'll tell you what, they would have to hang on, though, as you see Andy Tostanowski come out of her goal and then clear it off the line. Look at defender Sarah Jackson get back there, clear it out, and keep the score at two to one. And that would be the win. And now they'll take on Boston University and Nancy Feldman. They did the double in the Patriot League. They're first in the Patriot League after dominating the America East. Nancy Feldman will lead Boston U against Santa Clara at Virginia Tech. And we talked to the legendary coach from Boston U. Our program is a little bit younger, um, and, uh, and and we, we like to look at a Santa Clara and say, you know, can we get to the point where our program is considered a NCAA contender every year? Um, great talent on the field. Julie Johnson, it sort of starts with her, but it doesn't end with her. Uh, we know we have our hands full, but we're confident uh, in, um, in our team and in our players that we're going to be able to give, give uh, Santa Clara a good match. First year in the Patriot League, you win the double. Talk about your season, Coach. Yeah, Patriot League's a tough league, uh, and it's, I think, prepared us well for uh, postseason play in the NCAA tournament. Um, we uh, had our only loss of the season in the first game of the season, the regular season against Navy, and learned quite a bit from that experience. Uh, it was, a, you know, at the time, a painful lesson. Uh, we hadn't lost a conference game in a couple of years uh, coming out of the America East, but um, it probably was the best thing that could have happened to us, and... Uh, from that point on, we didn't lose another conference game uh, through the tournament. And um, what I think we learned was while the quality was very good in the conference, that uh, we matched up fine. And if we just went out there and did what we had done in the past, uh, we would be competitive. Uh, but I, I, I'm really pleased for our whole department and our soccer program in particular that we're competing in the Patriot League. Great quality coaching, great quality student athletes. And I think the BU student athletes, the BU women's soccer players are very similar to the, to the soccer players and, at these other great institutions. Kicked off the NCAA tournament, taking on your rivals from Harvard. Talk about that matchup. And they have a very talented team. And it was a rematch of a tie earlier in the season. So we, the teams know each other quite well, knew each other quite well going into the match. And um, I just think our team played a very, very good game uh, against the talented Harvard side. Well, good luck in Blacksburg as you take on Santa Clara November 23rd at 2 o'clock. Thanks for being with us here. And, Nancy, thanks for all you do for the NSCAA. Thanks a lot, Dean. Nancy Feldman, congratulations to Boston U and good luck against Santa Clara. Hello, everybody. I am Dean Linke and welcome to this week's edition of the NSCA College Highlights and Ranking Show right here in the Continental Tire Studios in Chapel Hill. We've got a big show here as we'll talk about the 32 teams remaining for Women Division One, and also a big show on the men's side. Let's take a look at what we will show you today, beginning with the women. As you see right there, updated Division I brackets. We'll take a look at all the games. Jennifer Rockwood, what a job she's done at BYU. We'll talk to her. We'll have the Division II and III brackets as well as the Junior College and NAIA updates. When that is done, we'll switch the 
card to men's college soccer and we'll have the Division I conference winners take a look at the 48 team field announced just yesterday. Mr. RPI, Dr. Tim Lenahan, what a job he's done at Northwestern is on the show. The Spartans, Damon Rensing is also here. We'll take a look at that UC San Diego thriller and we'll break down two, three, junior college and NAIA. But to get things started, we will start here with women and we welcome in Sari Rose from her goalkeeper at Wake Forest. And Sari, exciting time down to 32 now on the women's side. Yeah, there were some great early matchups early on. We saw the ACC went 8 and 0, but then we had some new teams like Arkansas and St. John's get their first NCAA win. So I think it's going to be an exciting week this round of 32. Well, let's get right to it, okay? Let's go right to the brackets here for the women as we break down the field and we'll also show you some scores by way of the brackets. And there you see Virginia Tech and Virginia Tech able to get a win. They'll take on West Virginia. Yeah, Virginia Tech thwarted UMBC's dream season 2-0 with goals by Shannon Mayrose and Ashley Manning. They have a tough second round, though, against West Virginia, who's coming off the regular and conference Big 12 tournament championships. Then Boston University versus Santa Clara. We talked about it. Santa Clara has 59 goals coming into this game, but BU's number one in the country with a .305 defense. And then there's St. John's. They got their first ever NCAA tournament win with a 3-1 upset over Central Florida. It was Central Florida's first loss in 18 games, and their goalkeeper, Diana Poland, had an unbelievable game for the Red Storm. But they're going to face Arkansas, who also is coming off their first ever NCAA win against an upset over Oklahoma State. And then that final game is going to be Duke, who pulled out a nail biter in PKs over Colorado. They actually subbed in their backup goalkeeper, who came in and saved two PKs for them. Now, the interesting thing about that game is it's being played at Duke because Florida's lost the past three years at home in the NCAAs and they just didn't even want to try and host. <laughs> that is interesting. Well, speaking of Florida teams, Florida State now featured in the other bracket we take a look at right now. And you see at the top of the bracket, we've got Nebraska. Freshman J.C. Johnson scored four goals to lift Nebraska over Southeast Louisiana. Johnson is only the fifth player in NCAA tournament history to do that. And we're going to see they're going to take on Boston College, who beat Crosstown rival Northeastern 2-0. And then you also have Illinois versus Portland, which is a great matchup. Portland had to have two late goals in the 78th and 89th minute to upstate Washington State. And then the game that I really like is Colorado versus BYU. Colorado is um, was able to beat Denver 3-0. It's the first time in the seniors' history that they were able to beat Denver, and it was Ann Steller's lone goal that put Colorado up top. But now they're going to have to face Jennifer Rockwood's BYU team, and I expect that to be a fantastic matchup. And like you said, it's FSU's bracket. They're coming off a five-goal victory against South Alabama, but they're playing Old Miss, who's got an unbelievable forward up top, Rafael Souza, who had three goals and is leading, or sorry, is tied in the nation with 122 points right now. Glad you mentioned the BYU Cougars because Jennifer Rockwood is the only coach to ever coach the BYU women's team in her 19th season, doing an amazing job. They got an opening round win over Weber State, and we caught up with Coach Rockwood. You know, we worked so hard to get to the tournament. Really excited to be a part of it again this year. Um, you know, we played our in-state rivals, Weber State. They're, they're a great opponent, but our team's been playing really well as of late and coming off our, our conference season strong. I think they both came to the conference, and uh, I think we carried us on Friday night. BYU women's soccer now on the national stage. Every single year you guys are a legitimate top ten program. Talk about what you've built there. You know, I just have an amazing uh, opportunity to recruit some outstanding uh, athletes here to BYU. Uh, so I love it here so much. I'm surrounded with great people, great administration, great coaches. And, you know, we just want to be the very best that we can be. We try uh, to work hard every single day. We love to compete. Try to go out and play a pretty competitive national schedule. Uh, uh, you know, and see what we can do and just try and get better and better each year. You know, we only have uh, four starters from last year's team, so we had a whole new team to put together this year. And the girls have done an amazing job. You know, a lot of them were still a part of last year, and so they're striving to be their best. They want to get back to where we were last year. Jennifer, we'd love to see you down the road here in a few weeks at Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary. Good luck in the tournament. Okay, thanks. We really appreciate it. Class Jennifer Rockwood. Now we go to the next bracket, the number one team in the country with just one loss, Virginia. 
UVA cruised to victory over St. Francis, but now has to face Georgetown. UVA leads the nation in scoring, but Davey, Noltown, Davey Nolan's Georgetown is ranked third. Granted, it's much harder to get goals in the ACC than the Big East, but I think this is going to be an interesting matchup of two prolific scoring teams. And then you've got Wake Forest, who was left out of the ACC tournament, but rebounded with an easy 2-1 win in the first round over Moorhead. The loss of Katie Stangle has been devastating, but the team is going to rally around senior goalkeeper Audrey Bledstow, who will have to do an amazing job if they're going to beat Penn State, who's third in the nation and averages 2.73 goals a game. Then you've got Michigan, who's hosting Illinois State. This is the first time that Michigan's host in several years, but they are 8-0 when they are hosting at home. Illinois State had stunned Louisville by winning on PK's 1-1, one and, one, and they're going to have to face a tough Michigan team. And then finally, it's Notre Dame versus Western Michigan. Notre Dame conceded an early goal over the weekend, but freshman midfielder Morgan Andrews added two goals along with one from Liz Tucker and Katie Naughton to put the game away. Notre Dame has had an interesting season, though. They've had six one-goal losses, and they've had four in double overtime. But Western Michigan shocked Marquette. They're riding a nice high, and I think the Broncos' solid defense is going to be an interesting matchup versus Notre Dame's scoring offense. And our finally updated bracket, UCLA and North Carolina in this final bracket. We talked about UCLA coming onto the into this tournament with a chip on their shoulder as a number two seed. They did a fantastic job versus San Diego State. Sam Mewis scored in the first 43 seconds of the game and they didn't look back. Now they're going to have to face a tough Kentucky team who's led by head coach John Lipsitz. They don't probably have the personnel of a UCLA, but he's an unbelievable strategist and I think he's going to take his team into a good position going into that. And then there's Stanford, South Carolina. Stanford had a 1-0 game versus Cal State Fullerton with Taylor Yu getting an early goal. It's her 11th of the season. Last year she had 21 goals and has struggled to adjust to the different conference. Now, South Carolina two years ago lost to Stanford and so this is a little bit of a rematch in the NCAA tournament for them. And then you've got Texas A&M and Texas Tech. Allie Berry was the hero for Texas A&M beating three defenders and then lofting a shot over the Utah goalkeeper to get Texas A&M the win. But they're going to face Texas Tech who is going to has an unbelievable uh, All-American and Jalen Hinkle, who's leading the team in assists. And then they've got Janine Ruck, who has 11 goals. The Red Raiders have 17 shutouts this season. And so it's going to be an unbelievable matchup of two Texas teams. And then you've got first-year head coach Amy Burberry at Indiana, who's had a phenomenal year taking the Hoosiers to their first NCAA bid since 2007. The Hoosiers set a single-season record for wins, but they're going to have to take on UNC, who not only is the reigning national championship, but gets back last year's Herman Trophy winner, Crystal Dunn. Whew. All right, <laughs> that is your update as we bring you back in here to the Continental Tire Studios. Dean Linky along with Sari Rose. This is the most exciting time of the year, and including that last one, Texas Tech, Texas A&M. That winner will most likely face North Carolina, although Indiana is not a walk in the park. Yeah, Amy Burberry has done an unbelievable job with the Hoosiers, really turned the program around, and I think she's going to have a, a nice uh, little bit of a game ahead of her. I think she's got a great assistant coach in Sergio Gonzalez, who's been a former head coach. Coach, and I think they're going to bring something to that game. Real quick, still sticking with Virginia? I do. I like them. I mean, they've got a good matchup against Georgetown, but I just think UVA's got more than Davey Nolan's team can handle. All right, of course, today's show is presented by the good folks of Continental Tire, and we thank Continental Tire, innovative technology, driving confidence. Learn more at ContinentalTire.com. There's a reason soccer is called the beautiful game. Experience it live at the 2013 NCAA Women's College Cup, December 6th and 8th at WakeMed Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Affordable tickets now available at NCAA.com slash Women's College Cup. Hey, Missy. Sorry I'm late. That's okay. I just don't want you boys to be late for your big game. Continental Tire, the official tire of Major League Soccer. Tra la la tra la tra 
Welcome back to the Continental Tire Studios in Chapel Hill. Dean Linky, along with former goalkeeper Sari Rose talking women's soccer. And Sari, let's get right to the D2 brackets for women's soccer. And we see D2 is going to have a number of returners from last year. We've got St. Rose who's had two quick goals in the span of three minutes by Michaela Phillips and Sydney Bond to put them atop of Delphi for their ninth regional championship. It also marks St. Rose's 19th shutout. They're going to play American International who won a rainy, sloppy mess versus Bridgeport 2-0. But American International and St. Rose met earlier this year for a 0-0 tie, so it's going to be a solid rematch. And then below that, you've got California. California, Pennsylvania, who had a 6-1 route of Kutztown and was led by junior Aaron Hogan, who had two goals and two assists for six points. With the pair of assists, Hogan is tied for second in the, in the uh, sorry, the Pennsylvania State Athletic Conference with 43 assists and also ranked second among active D2 players. Hogan and the Vulcans take on Slippery Rock. Slippery Rock had a tough 2-1 game versus Shippensburg that had a crazy win that made it difficult. And then on the other side, you've got Wingate versus Belmont Abbey, a little battle of the Carolina teams. Wingate is in its first Sweet 16 and had to advance on two games that went to PKs. They face Belmont, who is also in the Sweet 16 for the first time and should prove a worthy opponent, but Wingate leads that series 5-1. And then in the bottom part of that, we've got West Florida, who's the reigning reigning Division II champion and are unbeaten in the last 31 games. They're going to take on in-state uh, rival Rollins, who beat Tampa 3-2. And then next up, we've got Minnesota. Southwest Minnesota had a huge win over Minnesota State Manicata. It was the first time in Southwest program history they defeated Minnesota, Minnesota State, and they snapped their 36-game win streak. They've got to take on Minnesota Duluth, which is another in-state rivalry. And then beneath them, we've got Grand Valley State that handled Rockhurst easily with a 5-0 win. The Lakers are 20-0-1 with 20 shutouts on the year, but they face a determined Quincy team. And then we shift across, and we've got... Uh, sorry, we've got California San Bernardino. They upset, they upset Cal State Stanislaw 1-0 in the 97th minute with a goal by Melanie Aguayo. The Coyotes now face number two seed Western Washington, who will appear in its third regional championship. And then in the bottom, we've got Metro State, who upset Colorado Mines for its first win over a ranked opponent since last season. It also avenged Metro's loss to Colorado Mines, who bumped them out of last year's NCAA dance. Although Metro is the underdog in the regional championship versus St. Edwards, Metro is participating in its 12th consecutive tournament and should prove a worthy opponent for the higher seeded St. Edwards. Big time information on the Division II level. Now let's roll to Division Three as we take a look at the brackets here for Division Three. They're trying to get to San Antonio, Texas. Washington University Bears have only allowed four goals in 18 regular season, but they had to take on a tough Calvin College and they rallied three unanswered goals to beat Calvin College 3-1. And then in the next bracket, you've got Thomas Moore versus Capital. 14th ranked Thomas Moore defeated Hanover College 1-0. The Saints uh, outshot them 17 to five, but it was junior Christy Rallman who had the game winner. They're gonna have a tough match versus Capital. On the other side, you've got Montclair State versus Trinity. Montclair State won 7-0 over Bowdoin in a game that was played in dense fog, and Trinity had to go to PKs to get their win over Illinois Wesleyan. And then with Wheaton versus Emory, eighth ranked Emory defeated Lynchburg 11-0 on Sunday to make their fourth consecutive Sweet 16 appearance. But they're gonna have a tough match versus Wheaton, who they've defeated the last two years in the round of 16. And then we switch over and we see William Smith versus TCNJ. William Smith got its 19th consecutive victory and 12th shutout in a row, but they're going to face TCNJ, who beat a surging Rochester Institute of Technology 1-0 for the win. Beneath that, we've got Messiah and Ithaca. Messiah had to get first two first-half goals to put away Amherst, but they did it in 
fantastic style, and now they'll face Ithaca, who had to defeat Rowan one nothing. And then you've got Johns Hopkins versus William. It took overtime to do it, but Johns Hopkins University advanced to the round of 16 with their faithful and clutch goal scorer Hannah Chronic getting the only goal. And then you've got Middlebury versus Misericordia. Middlebury Panthers controlled most of the match to beat Endicott, but they're going to face a tough Misericordia who's been ranked the entire year in the top 10. Great work, Sarah. As we now roll to junior college first with Division One. They got pool play going on. A lot of action at uh, junior college level. Yeah, it's interesting. They're going to play two rounds of pool game before they go to a semifinals and finals. They've got 12 teams in the pool, and those teams have won 200 games, only have 25 defeats and five ties. They've got Butler that's got the nation's leading goal scorer and Morgan Foster with 43 goals and 102 points. We see Dart in there. Their goal scorer has 38. And then they've got the returning national champion, Paradise Valley, who's just had a fantastic year and has only suffered one slight loss. Quick love here for the Division Three winner at Junior College, Katie Miller. And you're where you grew up, Sari. We talked about Brookdale won the national championship. They surged late in the year to get in the top 10. They're from Lincroft, New Jersey. You gotta love the school. You gotta love New Jersey. And on Sunday, the NAI announced the field for the 30th annual NAI Women's Soccer National Championships. The 31 team championship will get underway on November 23rd with the final six teams advancing, 16 teams advancing to the Orange Beach Sportsplex in Alabama December 2nd through 7th. Defending national champion Lindsey Wilson earned its 15 consecutive trip after winning the Mid-South Conference Tournament title. The Blue Raiders boast the most national crowns among the field with five. Two squads also punched a ticket to their first ever national championship after winning their respective crowns. We've got Columbia and Our Lady of the Lake in Texas. This year's 31 teams include 24 automatic qualifiers and there are 17 teams that qualified for the 2012 championship that are back again this year. All right, women's soccer in the books. Great stuff by Sari Rose, researching not just Division <laughs> One but all the levels. It's, it's good to get to know the D2 and D3 teams, but of course the spotlight goes on the D1 level. You picked Virginia earlier, a lot of great games this week. And I think you're right. I think we have a ton of great games. I'm interested to see the UCLA versus Kentucky matchup. You also have West Virginia is going to take on Virginia. Virginia Tech, which I think Virginia Tech has one of the tougher number one seed second round games. And then, of course, we've got Florida and Duke. Duke struggled throughout the year, but they're tough at home. And I like Robbie Church, and I think he's going to have something up his sleeve. It's going to be fun. We'll see you next week here as they continue to roll on on the women's side. That's Siri Rose. I'm Dean Linke. We'll be back to break down the men's side of college soccer right here on NSCAA TV. The new fall flooring styles are here, and we've got them on sale now at Lumber Liquidators. Save on new hand-scraped and exotic hardwood, bamboo, laminate, and more. Choose from 53 floors under $2 a square foot. Don't wait. Sales going on now at Lumber Liquidators. Each year, the NSCAA puts over 7,000 coaches through our coaching education program. Youth, high school, and college coaches at all levels participate in the diploma courses. Join your peers and get educated. Better coaching, better players, better game. NSCAA Coaching Academy. Improving soccer, one coach at a time. Register today at nscaa.com slash education. The Navy midshipmen won their first Patriot League title in program history after blanking Holy Cross 2-0 in the championship game of the 2013 tournament on Sunday in Annapolis, Maryland. The Mids have now won 14 straight games and they'll make their 11th appearance in the NCAA tournament and first since 1988. It's unbelievable. It's, it's, the, greatest, it's the greatest feeling, you know. We've worked so hard, the seniors for the past four years, I mean everyone. And, to win, to win this game today it was you know 11 and 0 in the Patriot League, haven't lost a game, and it's just, it's an incredible feeling. We can't wait for NCAA's. You know, for for the seniors, I'm really pleased for them. I, you know, that that class and me. I mean, we, we've been through a lot. I think of hard work to get to this point. This was their last chance, and, and hopefully, uh, you know, for the rest of us, this can vault us into contention in other years as well. But yeah, I'm proud of the guys, and certainly happy for the program. Oh, it's just an honor for us. I mean, we're really working for it the past three years. It's been a real tough time for us. Past three seasons finished 500, so it's really a privilege and an honor to win it. 
The top seed at mids applied the pressure early and often, but goalkeeper Kevin Wright and his third seed at Crusaders kept Navy off the board with timely saves. Despite the missed opportunities, the mid spirit was never broken. I mean, we really feel pressure. I mean, we felt real good. We were playing great. We came out real strong. Our keeper, he played a tremendous game, so props to him. But, you know, we were knocking on the, door, on the doorstep, but, you know, we didn't feel any pressure. It was kind of just, it wasn't a matter of if we were going to score as one. And that moment finally came in the 39th minute when Jeff Fries potted the mid's first goal of the game on a breakaway. His game-winning goal, however, will be remembered more for the amazing assist from Patrick Sopko. In what could be the play of the year in men's soccer, Sopko bicycle kicked the ball past a pair of defenders to spring Fry's free on goal for the breakaway. And he pushed it past right to make it 1-0 at halftime. Patrick Sopko comes off the bench, he's a senior, and uh, our whole team knows him. And that kid just plays with such passion, such heart. And to see him get, you know, just a great work rate goal like that, well, I mean, he made it for Jeff Fry's, uh, but clearly it was Patrick who made the opportunity. It was fantastic, whole team certainly appreciates it even more. Navy continued to pressure after the break and off of one of their seven corners, Patriot League Defensive Player of the Year Joseph Greenspan headed the ball in for the 2-0 advantage. For the mids who had 18 shots to Holy Cross's four and a 7-0 edge in corners, it was a well-scripted performance. I urged our guys, like we just had to show up and be good from the start. We, we couldn't afford a slow afternoon game start or anything like that because Holy Cross had played an extra game this week. We were aware of that. And I, you know, earning the number one seed, I think we, we couldn't let them off the hook that way and we had to have our foot in the gas from the start. That has been the motto all season for the mids who are 15-3-2 and two, a year after posting a 500 record. Just our spirit. I mean, we're all best friends. We hang out together. We do so much together. And just be able to come together off the field and on the field at the same time and not, you know, we're all friends first and soccer players and just be able to, to have that spirit within the team that, you know, we know we trust each other and we, we just love each other so much that coming out on the soccer field, it's just easy for us and we just love to play together. Uh, honestly, it's, it's a... It's a, it's a team and a group of seniors, by and large, who've just decided to be disciplined, to be unselfish, to do things the right way. And, and you know, that's, that's a part of culture coming in and the right attitude. The right guys with the right attitude, you, know, you can accomplish a lot. Before the game, when we huddle up on the field of stars, we say, you know, you know, play defense and keep it tight and everything else will follow in. And today, that was the case, like a lot of other games, you know, we were able to keep the shutout, put a few goals in the back of the net. And we just, you know, we took care of them in, in the back of the field. Congratulations to Dave Brandt. We thank Jimmy Johnson from the Patriot League for bringing us that great report on the undefeated Navy midshipmen in the Patriot League. More to come here in men's college soccer as we'll take a look at all the conference winners from weekend action. We'll break down the 48 team division one field visit with Mr. RPI Northwestern head coach Tim Lenahan as the Wildcats get in. Damon Renzi's done an incredible job at Michigan State. They lost to Indiana in the Big Ten final. He joins us. How about at division two the thriller from UC San Diego as the students storm the field and we'll break down division two three junior college and NAIA. Let's start though with the conference winners as we break down some of the brackets here across the country as we do want to point out that Bad weather in the Midwest played havoc with Sunday's finals, forcing delays and time changes, even last minute venue changes before George Mason won the A-10, Milwaukee won the Horizon, Bradley won Missouri Valley, and Indiana won the Big Ten. As you see here, your ACC champion, though, Maryland with an own goal late in the match, able to knock off Virginia and win the ACC championship in the last year of the ACC for Sasso Soroski. As we roll on, We'll take a look now at the American Conference and USF, George Kiefer's team. We saw them early on on NSCAA TV. They win 6-5 to five on penalty kicks against one of the best goalkeepers in the country. As UConn All-American Andre Blake made three saves in the shootout, but USF's Brenton Muhammad matched him twice saving shots before Dwayne Muckett put the Bulls ahead and Muhammad made his third consecutive save on Kwame Owua to seal the win for USF. Moving on here then, you've got the Big Ten Tournament. How about the Indiana Hoosiers? The reigning national champions had to win the Big Ten Tournament to even get into the NCAA Tournament as they had a losing record. Lost quite a few games in overtime. They get an overtime win over the Michigan Wolverines and then they knock off Michigan State. Jamie Vollmer, the transfer from Butler, with his first ever goal as a collegiate. It could not have been a bigger one. Congratulations to Todd Yagley and the Indiana Hoosiers, your Big Ten champions. And of course, great soccer being played out on the West Coast as well. The Big West Conference, UC Irvine, able to beat UC Davis and then Cal State Northridge, 
Of course, Cal State Northridge knocked off UC Santa Barbara. UC Santa Barbara with a couple of red cards that could impact their first game in the NCAA tournament. But congratulations to UC Irvine. Moving right along here on the conference breakdowns in the conference UNC USA, Charlotte. Elbow to win it, knocking off Tulsa by a score of one to nothing, and that win also earned Charlotte a seed. Only 16 teams get seed in the 48 team field here in NCAA Division One. Let's take a look at the rest of the conference winners. How about Pete Karinji? His son gets two goals as they knock off Hartford by a score of four to nothing. East Tennessee State knocks off North Florida in the Atlantic Sun. It's George Mason winning the Atlantic 10 over St. Louis. St. Louis started with so much promise to start the season. Marquette in the Big East knocking off Providence 3-2 at PPL Park. Coastal Carolina, they've been strong all year long. They win the Big South with a 2 nothing win over Liberty. The CAA, Drexel over William & Mary by a score of one to nothing. Nice job by both those teams to get there. And then in the Horizon League, it's Milwaukee over UIC. And I'll tell you what, you got to give UIC all kinds of credit this season. They do not make the 48 team field. They probably should be in. Ivy won. Penn rather won the Ivy League. They do not have a tournament in the Ivy League, but congratulations to Penn. And here's the rest of your winners there. As you see the MACC winner, the Mid-American, the Akron Zips. They win the MAC. What do they get out of it? They have to face Indiana in the first round of the tournament. We'll show that to you in a moment. Jim DeRosa's Bradley team beat Missouri State to win the Missouri Valley, and they'll face Northwestern. In Northeast, it was St. Francis of New York. They're your victor. How about in the Pac-12? So tight down near the end, but Washington able to hold off UCLA and Cal and win the Pac-12. Wofford, a great effort from Ralph Paulson, but Darren Powell's Elon Phoenix with the win, and Elon will make it to the NCAA tournament. Denver wins the summit. In the WAC, it's Seattle, and in the WCC, no tournament there, but it is Loyola Marymount. Those are your conference winners here in NCAA Division I as we welcome you back to the Continental Tire Studios. Dean Linke here with you, and we thank you for being with us. And now let's take a look at it. Yesterday, the 48 team field was unveiled on NCAA TV, and let's take a look at it now here. UCLA will face the winner of Elon and Clemson. Coach Noonan's team will come into Burlington. UConn and Quinnipiac will then get to take on UMBC. A great job by Pete Karinji. And then how about Marquette? They get the number nine seed and they'll await the winner of Akron and Indiana. An unbelievable matchup between the Big Ten champs and the MAC champs. Akron will host that game in front of what will be a sellout crowd. Delaware will welcome in Dr. Dave Mazur, St. John's team. And then your number eight seed is George Galnovich's Virginia team. As we look at the lower bracket here, your number four seed is Kevin Grimes in California as they come in at 12, 4, and 2. Maryland is your number five seed winning the ACC tournament, and they'll face the winner of Penn and Providence. The North Carolina Tar Heels will host one game. Carlos Samuano's team taking on South Florida, George Kiefer's team, and that winner will have to travel out to California to battle UC Irvine. Charlotte gets the number 13 seed. We saw they won their tournament and they'll face either Coastal Carolina or East Tennessee State. And then finally, the Northwestern Wildcats at 10, 7, and 3. Sneaking in, and they'll get a rematch now with Bradley. And what a job Tim Lenahan has done with the Northwestern Wildcats. Check this out. He took over a program that hadn't won a game or a Big Ten game in years, and he's taking that team to two Elite Eights in 2006 and 2008. Last year, they were in the Sweet 16, a match a feat they also accomplished in 2009 and in 2011 they won the regular season and the tournament of the Big Ten. They got a share last year in the regular season. We call him the RPI doctor with his lab coat on and we caught up with Coach Tim Lenahan. Everything but the lab coat on. He is the RPI doctor and his team is in talking about Tim Lenahan. What a job he's done for the Northwestern Wildcats. Tim, congratulations on making the field of 48. Thanks, Dean. Uh, really nervous couple days. Um, you know, from our loss against Michigan State on Friday, knowing we had a pretty good RPI and a pretty good resume. But, you know, getting down to it, I knew there was probably nine spots for, for, for 12 teams. And, you know, just really thrilled for our guys. We've been through a lot in terms of injuries this year. So just thrilled for our guys to have a, a, another crack at this. That being said, I know that there's uh, some hearts broken, you know, at different places, Gonzaga, um, UIC right down the road here, my good friend Sean Phillips, and also uh, over at Xavier, you know, our former assistant coach, Andy Fleming. So, you know, I'm thrilled for our group, but I know, you know, 
at some places around the country, they're a little bit disappointed right now, so I feel for those guys. Well, you were crunching the numbers. You said you deserved to be in, and now you get another shot at Bradley. Yeah, we, you know, that was our, uh, we had won seven straight games uh, leading into that game, and uh, it was our first Wednesday midweek game when school started. So we were a little bit flat. They came out, took it to us. We were down 2 nothing. We fought back 2-2, and then, you know, they scored in overtime. Jimmy DeRose screw up about 15 minutes for me in New Jersey. Great coach, great culture down there in terms of, you know, how they do things. Lots of seniors always, um, how they build their program. So it's going to be a tough game for us. But, again, we're excited to play Bradley again and excited to host it. Finally, Tim Lenahan, the Northwestern Wildcats. You took over a team that did not win a game. You've been to two Elite Eights. You've been to two Sweet Sixteens, and you're not even fully funded. That qualifies, in my mind, making you one of the best coaches in the country Talk about what it's meant to build this program at Northwestern. It's been very special. And that's kind of our tag tagline is something special. You know, the best college soccer experience and, and the successes and uh, of all, you know, on the field are a byproduct, I think, of the, some of the culture. So it's been a great run uh, for the last 13 years. Like you said, we went 35 games without winning a game. And now, you know, we're heading to our eighth fence tournament in the last 10 years and seven out of the last eight so really proud of the guys really uh you know they really believe in the program and the culture here and uh it's just been it's just been a, a just a very very special run and uh you know hopefully like i said we had a lot of injuries this year we just got our horses back for the big 10 tournament and uh, i thought we played very well so we're looking forward to a second chance here in the ncaa tournament real quickly when it's all over we'll see you at the nsca convention you run one of the best sessions you'll see called Moneyball, talking about how to get the most out of your scholarship money i can't wait for that why do you like participating at the convention coach you know the fact that i get to present every couple of years and kind of share some of your thoughts you know and help some coaches and who you know, maybe can't see past some of the obstacles uh, in front of you. Um, you know, if we can help some coaches kind of get some ideas and exchange ideas, that's really what it's all about. So I, I get as much there as I um, give. A lot of times uh, it's the same stories over and over again, but, and, uh, you know, people can enjoy it. But I always look forward to the convention just for the camaraderie and, and also gleaning some things every once in a while here. Tim, good luck against Bradley. Congratulations on all of your success. Thanks, Dean. Thanks for all that the NSCA does for college soccer and particularly you and, and the energy and enthusiasm you bring to our sport. So um, we look forward to uh, having a great run in the NCAA tournament. And again, look forward to seeing everybody at the convention come January. As your number two seed is indeed Washington. As Washington with Jamie Clark earns that number two seed and they'll await the winner of Elmar Bolovich's Creighton team and Seattle. Stanford will battle Loyola Marymount. Coach Gunn has Stanford at 9, 6, and 3. And if they win, they'll face Cal State Northridge. UC Santa Barbara will await the winner of Bob Warming's Penn State team and St. Francis of Brooklyn. And then how about William and Mary and George Mason? Those two teams know each other well. If they win, they'll face the number seven seeded New Mexico. And in your final bracket, another Clark, Bobby Clark, the great one at 12, 1, and 6. Notre Dame gets the number three seed. And they'll await the winner of Wisconsin. John Trask's team will take on Milwaukee. Those two teams face each other earlier in the year. How about Wisconsin? First time back in the tournament since they won the national championship back in the mid-90s. So go Badgers. VCU will take on Navy, as we heard from Navy already, and the job Dave Brandt did. That'll be a great one. And the winner of that game will face Wake Forest. Down below them, Old Dominion and Drexel will battle for a chance to take on Georgetown. Brian Weiss's team made it all the way to the championship game a year ago. Kenny Lola's team at 11-4-3 will take on a very good Denver team. If they win, they'll face Michigan State and Damon Rensing. And what a job Damon Rensing has done 20 years wearing the green and white. He was a player there, assistant coach one year with the women, 10 years under Joe Baum, and now in his fifth season, they're the 2012 Big Ten Tournament champs. So many big victories, including a win a year or two ago over Akron. They've beaten Notre Dame 20 years with the Spartans. And we caught up with Mr. Green and White, Damon Rensing. Joined now by the head coach of the Michigan State Spartans, Damon Rensing. He gets the 11 seed coach. Tell me about what that means for your Spartan program. Well, it's great. We're uh, very excited about it. Um, it's a privilege to be seated, uh, privilege to be in the tournament, but... Uh, I think it's a testament to the schedule we played. A uh, ton of teams, both in our conference and out of conference, and uh, we had a long, 
long last five days, uh, three games in five days to the Big Ten Tournament Championship. So that bye is huge. It'll certainly mean some much-needed rest for us, and I think that's the biggest key for us. Yeah, you've got some players banged up, but they've showed all kinds of heart and fortitude. Kevin Cope might not only be the toughest kid at Michigan State history, might be one of the toughest kids to ever play. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll vote for that. Um, um, there's a lot of tough players out there, but certainly – He's one of them, and uh, he's just a great kid, great leader, and a great soccer player. Louisville or Denver? Do you care? Tell about tell us about both teams. Yeah, well, it's a, obviously a very tough draw because you got two very good teams in Louisville and Denver. Uh, Louisville host, um, very well coached by Ken Lola, does a great job. You know, they're they're tourney tests, so they're in there most of the time, and have been known to make some very deep runs, even be in a College Cup, I think, back in 2010. So. And, and probably one other one. So that'll be very good. And then you got a very talented Denver team. Uh, Coach Muse does a great job there. Um, maybe not the strongest conference, but I think Denver is a very talented team, and they would do well in most most conferences. So I don't know who would win between those, but I know whoever does will present a very difficult match for us come Sunday. Finally, Coach, the Big Ten's proof of how tough the NCAA has been. they got five teams in. But overall, college soccer, have you ever seen so much parity Anybody could win this thing, right, Coach? Anybody can win this. There's uh, 48 great teams in the field, probably another 10, 20 that could have been in the field. And uh, I think, you know, not only is a lot of parity in college soccer, but I think the brand of college soccer, the, the, amount, the, the quality of soccer being played is getting better and better too. So that's a great sign for college soccer. Not, is there, not only is there, uh, you know, a lot of parity, but, the quality of soccer is getting better and better, and a lot of teams are playing. It's a, a beautiful brand of soccer. Damon Rensing played at Michigan State. He was assistant coach for double-digit years and now doing an incredible job as the head coach of the Spartans. Damon, congratulations on all your success and good luck in the NCAA tournament. Great. Thanks, Dean. Teams that didn't make it, UIC, Gonzaga, UAB, just to name a few, and we wish all of those teams the best of luck. Congratulations on a great season. Today's interview with Michigan State head coach Damon Rensing and all of the other interviews and features on this program are presented by Shattuck St. Mary's, a college prep boarding school with a full-time residential soccer center of excellence for boys and girls and a member of the U.S. Soccer Development Academy. We thank Jesse Fortney and Tim Carter from their beautiful Minnesota base campus. To learn more, visit s-sm.org. And the NSCA convention is right around the corner in Philadelphia. You can still register by going to nscaa.com slash convention. They call it the biggest party. Speaking of big parties, just want to let all the college coaches know that this year in Philly, the most happening place to be will be at the NSR Australia NSCA party. Open bar, yes, open bar all night. Entertainment, celebrities, U.S. national team, women's coach Tom Sermani, football freestylers, a live band, DJ, giveaways, and more. Get yourself there Friday, January 7th at the Ben Ballroom. Don't forget to register. It's free for coaches, only college coaches, though, guys, for guys and girls. ID and proof that you're a college coach to be taken at the night. NSR Australia is an Australian company who helps Australian soccer players obtain opportunities in the USA. They're already cleared as well academically, so be sure to get to that party as well. We come back, we'll take a look at D2, D3, Junior College, and NAIA as we roll on from the Continental Tire Studios in Chapel Hill. There's a reason soccer's called the beautiful game. Experience it live at the 2013 NCAA Men's College Cup, December 13th and 15th at PPL Park in Philadelphia. Affordable tickets now available. Visit NCAA.com slash Men's College Cup. Take aim, America. Focus on your target and not the goalkeeper, and you will score more goals and win more matches. Practicing with the ultimate goal sports targets is the best way to train you to score more goals. Simply attach the Velcro straps to the net and you are ready for the best shooting practice around. As a special offer, we'll send you a package of two red bullseye ultimate goal sports targets for only $19.99. Sports targets are also great for helping you hit the mark in baseball, tennis, hockey, lacrosse and more. And for a limited time, we'll double your offer and send you two blue sports targets free. Just pay separate processing and handling. Take aim, America, and improve your game with the ultimate gold sports targets. Here's how to order.
Welcome back to the Continental Tire Studios in Chapel Hill. I'm Dean Linky. We've covered women's soccer and we've covered Division One for men's soccer. Now let's go to men's soccer Division Two as those brackets are also in play. As you take a look at it right there, LIU Post will take on Southern New Hampshire, Millersville, and Mercyhurst. You've got Rollins in West Florida, Carson, Newman, and Lander. The Division Two brackets, they're all trying to get to Evans, Georgia, the same place that will host women's Division Two. As we flip the chart and give you the other 16 teams, you got Lewis, and Rockhurst, you've got Lindenwood and Fort Hay State, Midwestern State and Regis, and then Simon Frazier will take on UC San Diego and how about UC San Diego a big win over their rival Chico State this past Saturday night November 16th in front of nearly 1,000 at Triton Soccer Stadium in La Jolla. It was the fourth meeting this season, a third straight that required overtime. Ultimately went 2-1-1 one, one against them as this match officially went down to a 1-1 one, one tie. Senior center back Gavin Lamming heads home senior midfielder on Dishay Bagheri's free kick into the corner for a 1-1 deadlock at 18-02 and they would celebrate in front of the near 1,000 fans there at Triton Stadium and right away it was UC San Diego up 1-0. Then senior Corey Wolfram converts a must-make penalty kick in the fifth round of the tiebreaker to keep the Tritons alive as the penalty kick shootout would have all kinds of drama on the first the next one, Chico State kick. UCSD needs to stop or the Wildcats advance. Senior Octavio Guzman, Chico State's leading scorer, steps up. And senior goalkeeper Josh Cohen, the two-time California Collegiate Athletic Association MVP, makes an incredible save diving to his left and swatting the ball away with his left hand as it was a big-time save. You see it right there. After both teams convert in the sixth round, Triton freshman Malik Bashi, who had knocked Chico State out of the conference tournament, Semifinals with an overtime winner just one week before. Opens the seventh round by coolly converting his attempt. J Josh Cohen makes his third and final save of the tiebreaker. Going to his right this time to smother Chico State junior Justin Saul's attempt. Much of the capacity crowd on hand, which had in large part emptied the stands and come onto the sidelines for the tiebreaker. They stormed the field. And congratulations to John Pascal's UCSD team. Now, Division Three men's soccer, as you look at it there, Rutgers, Camden, and York, Montclair State, Rochester, New York. How about Messiah? They're always there taking on Kenyon. Franklin and Marshall will take on Rolls-Holman. That's in one part of the Division Three men's soccer bracket as all those teams trying to get to San Antonio, Texas. Loris will welcome in West Men. It's Trinity, Texas. In the lower bracket, Brandeis and Williams, St. Lawrence and Amherst. Taking a look at junior college now for Division I. It's pool play, and the final will be held at Eastern Florida State's College Melbourne campus as we wish all of the junior college teams at Division I. Tons of college coaches will be there as well recruiting as we wish all those teams good luck. And then how about finally NJCE Men's Soccer Division Three National Championship. That'll be played up at Herkimer County Community College. And Herkimer, they win it. Congratulations to the Herkimer Generals. They are your NJCAA Division Three National Champion. And then finally, the NAIA National Championship opening round will kick off the 32-team tournament at 16 campus sites on November 23rd, with the 16 winners advancing to the National Championship final site in Montgomery. Defending national champion Bellhaven earned an at-large bid after falling 1-0 in double overtime to Martin Methodist in the Southern States Athletic Conference, and four teams will be competing in their first national championship. Corbin, Georgia Gwinnett, Indiana Westland, and Thomas also of Georgia. Wow, it's been a big show here for you. And don't forget that uh, next weekend, we'll take a look at the results at all levels, Division 1, 2, and 3, right here on the NSCA Weekly College Highlights and Rankings Show. That's Tuesday, November 26th at 1 p.m. Remember again, still time to sign up for the NSCA convention in Philadelphia, January 15th through 19th at nsca.com slash convention. And don't forget about that great NSR Australia NSCA party. It's an open bar. Tom Sermani, the U.S. women's coach, will be there. All kinds of celebrities and entertainment. And did I mention open bar? NSR Australia is an Australian company who helps Australian soccer players obtain opportunities in the USA. Their biggest point of difference is that all their athletes are pre-qualified, both academically and athletically, so that when they speak to college coaches personally about a player, they know they are already set. Wow, what a big show. So many people to thank. And we want to thank all of the SIDs for 
helping make this show go. Joey Carpet, Santa Clara, the good folks at BYU, Boston University, Navy, the Patriot League, Northwestern, Michigan State, UC San Diego, and of course the NAIA, as well as the fine production crew here. And the good folks in Kansas City, led by Joe Cummings, Kathleen Hermesh, getting it done graphically as well. Kyle Lang, Taylor, Ben, Ryan, Pat, the entire crew, Sari Rose as well. And I am Dean Linky saying thanks for watching right here on NSCAA TV.